So I've previously taken a look at the BSPC node subcommand and the desktop subcommand, and today we're going to take a look at the monitor subcommand. So if you're new to this channel, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm aiming for a thousand subs and any help would be really appreciated. So now that's out of the way, let's get started. Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the channel. So as always, I'm going to start off with showing you the man page for BSPC and if there are any examples that I feel like I should probably cover, I'll open them up in a second terminal. So let's actually have a look at my main screen. So the part we're going to be looking at today is the no... What was it? The uh, monitor subcommand, not the node. Why did I say that? Node was a while ago. So monitor, let's see. So first up, we've got the selectors in here. So a lot of these will be very, very similar to what we did with desktop. And as always, this syntax in here, I'm not going to cover. I'm just going to show you how to structure the commands and then you should be able to piece it together from that. It's the exact same as doing it with desktop and also with node. So if you look back at some of the examples that I had in those videos, you'll see that it's almost identical. You just change the subcommand. So let's actually have a look at some of these descriptors. So as I've mentioned in those videos, your selector is made up of two parts. So you've got the descriptor and you've got the modifier. So the descriptors are any of these. And then after you've added one of the descriptors in, you can chain that with a modifier. So let's actually just have a look at some of these and then I can show you an example. So you can specify a direction that the monitor is in relative to the main monitor. So if you've used something like XRender, which you probably have if you've got multiple monitors set up, then you'll know that when you set up your monitors, you set them to be either to the left or to the right of a monitor or above or below it. So that is how you go about using that. You don't use up, down, left or right, you use the cardinal direction, so north, south, east and west to specify which of those directions. So next up we have the cycle dir. So I can't actually explain where all of your monitors are going to be placed relative to each other. But the way that this works is all of your monitors are loaded up in a list. So the next monitor to say your main monitor will be your second monitor or your third monitor. And then the previous or in this case you write prev not previous will be the monitor prior to that. So it's much easier with two monitors. So on my system, I've got my main monitor, which is my laptop screen and also my external monitor. So the next monitor to my main screen will be my external monitor. The previous monitor to my external screen will be my main monitor, but that will entirely depend on how many monitors you have and the, the order that they are specified within BSPC. I think that's actually the order it uses, not the XRander order. But as I said, I only have two monitors to try this out with, so I can't actually tell you how that's gonna function. So next up we have any. So any will match the first monitor that it comes across that matches any of the selectors. So if you just use any, it's going to match, I believe with just whatever your main monitor is. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure if you don't use anything besides any, it will just pick up your main monitor. So in this case, it'll be my laptop screen. So last, selects the previously focused monitor relative to the reference monitor. So let's assume we have three monitors, okay? So if you focus on the middle one, and then you say focus on the one on the left. So the last monitor to the one on the left will be the middle monitor because that was the one that you had previously focused on. Newest will get the, it's effectively the same as focused, which I'm not really sure why newest is a thing. If someone can explain the purpose of newest, because what newest will select, will select the newest focused monitor, which is always going to be whatever monitor you have currently focused. So I'm not really sure what the purpose of that selector actually is. So older will select the monitor older than the reference monitor in the history. So this has to do, I believe, with creation history. So if we look at my BSPC config, so if we look at the order that I load up my monitors, I've got my main monitor loaded up first, and then I've got my external monitor. So in this case, my main monitor will be older than my external monitor, and my external monitor will be newer than my internal monitor. So focus does the exact same thing that focus does with desktops and nodes. So it'll take whichever the focused monitor is. So where my cursor is right now, this means that my main monitor is my focus monitor. If I was to move over to my external screen, which you can't see, but if you look at the top, it now says I am focused on uh, OBS right now. So I'm on my external screen. That means that my external monitor is now the focused monitor. So pointed works 
slightly differently to focused except on my system and if you've got it set up similar to mine it's going to do the exact same thing so what pointed does is it'll take whatever monitor your cursor is pointing at so in this case it's this monitor but with my system my focus follows where my pointer is so on my system they mean the same thing but if you manually swap between focus with your keyboard then it's going to be wherever you currently have your mouse cursor so if you have your mouse cursor disabled then that's not going to be very useful to you anyway. So primary will select your main monitor. So in this case, that'll be my laptop monitor. But as I said, if you've got multiple external monitors, say you're using a desktop system, you've got like a triple monitor set up, then you'll have to work out what your primary monitor is based on your system. But you can also select the monitor by its number. So if you use the caret symbol, so BSPC monitor, and then we go caret, and then let's say three. Assuming that I had three monitors, that would select my third monitor. So you can also select them with the monitor IDs and the monitor names. Now I'm not sure what the monitor name is. That might be the adapter name. I'll see if I can find some other reference to monitor name. That is, okay, so I guess you can actually name the monitor when you create them. So yeah, I don't see any other references to it. So it's either the name that you specify, or I assume that if you don't specify a name, it's gonna use the adapter name. So as I mentioned before, you also have these modifiers. So in this case with monitors, we only have two modifiers. So we have the focused and the occupied. So focused will do exactly what you'd expect. So what this will do is it'll say, consider the third monitor that is focused. So in this case, this won't find anything because we're currently focused on the first monitor. And that means that this isn't going to work. But if we were to do something like this, this effectively means consider the first monitor and consider the monitor that is focused. Or consider the first monitor that is focused would be the better way to say that. So in this case, the first monitor is focused. That will basically select this monitor. But that's a really complicated way of doing that. Typically, you can just do focus. You don't really need to use the modifiers with monitors, but you also have the option of using the occupied modifier. So occupied is a more interesting one. So what occupied will do is this will only consider monitors that have something on them. So in this case, my main monitor has something on it. My external monitor has something on it. But if I was to close all of these windows here, what this would do is it'll say that my main monitor has nothing on it, but my external monitor does have something on it. So you could use some, I don't know, some sort of parsing for that. Maybe you want to, I don't know, hide everything on your main monitor, for example. That's one thing you could do with that. But I've never run into a situation where I actually want to use that. So let's actually have a look at some of the commands that monitors have. I believe they're fairly similar to the desktop ones. Yes, they actually are very similar. There's a couple of extras, but let's actually just go through them. So as with everything else, you have the option of using focus. So if you want to do everything from the terminal or you want to bind everything to key presses, you don't have to use the mouse. If you want to focus on the external monitor with a key press, or you want to focus on your main monitor with a key press, you can use the dash F option. So if we were to do something like this, let's say we want to focus on the second monitor. So we will do something like that. So we also have the option of swapping two monitors. So the way that I understand this is it's going to swap all of the desktops on one monitor with all of the desktops on another monitor. So what this would do on my system, for example, so I've got these seven desktops on my main monitor. If I swap that with my external monitor, it would put all of those seven desktops on my external and all of the three on my external onto my main monitor. But as I said, I'm not gonna swap those because that monitor is much bigger and it's behind the camera. So I'm gonna be looking in a weird spot. So I'm not gonna do that, but that's basically what that does. So you would do that with something like that, for example. And then you'd have to specify which monitor you wanted to swap it with. So you're better off actually fully qualifying it in this case. So swap monitor one with monitor two, basically is what I'm trying to say here. So we can add desktops to a monitor. So normally you would do this in your configuration. So if we have a look at my configs, I've brought them up a bit earlier in the video. I should have just left them open. So these are the commands you would have used when you're actually specifying the desktops that you want on your monitors. So in this case, I'm using BSPC monitor and then I'm specifying EDP1, which is the main monitor. And then I'm saying that I want 
desktops one through seven on it. In this case, I'm using reset as opposed to add, but it's basically the same thing. So if you want to add them instead, you can use the dash A option. Reset will basically just delete everything that's already there and then add them back, which I'm doing that in my config just so I don't get overlapping desktop. So we can also reorder the desktop. So let's say instead of using numbers, we would actually name them like browser, file manager, things like that. Then instead of having that order, we could then rearrange the order, but also maintain the current desktops that we have. Whereas if you were to use reset in that case, it would completely delete everything that's on those desktops, or it might try to move them into different locations. I've had some difficulties when actually using the reset option. So be careful with using that. Typically it'll be fine but occasionally your nodes will get moved around between different desktops, especially when you're actually deleting some desktops like you're unplugging an external monitor and then you're plugging it back in. Stuff might get moved around, so just be careful with what you're doing with reset. So rectangle's one that I haven't ended up using because I typically just do everything within X render, but I'm guessing you could specify a new size for a monitor. Like let's say you didn't want to use the entire monitor for some reason, or maybe you're getting a bit of uh, what's it called when the screen overlaps? I'll put it on the screen. I can't remember what the word is. Overscan, that's the one I'm thinking of. So if you're getting some overscan or underscan, you could use the rectangle option to try to address that. I would recommend just doing it within XRander, but if you did want to use BSPC to do it, then I'm guessing you could do it through this command. I have never had to use this, so don't quote me on whether that actually works or not. Rename is another one that I haven't used because I'm fine with just using the interface names. So Let's say you are using the interface names, but you wanted to change this from HDMI 1 to say, external monitor. Then you could use the rename option to do that. So in this case, we could do something like BSPC monitor HDMI dash one, and then dash A dash one I meant, dash N, and then whatever name we wanted to give it, like let's say external. That would then rename my HDMI 1 monitor, which is my external monitor, to something that's more representative to something like external. And we also have the option of using remove. So if for whatever reason we wanted to remove a desktop, like let's say we unplugged a monitor or we did some other reason why we don't want that monitor to be there anymore, then we can use the remove option. So I think that's pretty much everything for the commands and the selectors. So next up, I've got a video I'm doing on BSPC rules. They're actually far less complicated than I thought they were. And then I'm gonna go over the query syntax. And then I think that's pretty much everything for my series on BSPWM. I'm gonna cover some other status bars, but as for the main stuff with BSPWM, I think after I do that video, that'll be basically everything left to cover. If someone has something they want me to do, let me know, I'll be happy to cover it. But if not, then that's probably gonna be the end of it. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you wanna see more videos like this, then give me some ideas and I'll be happy to cover some BSPWM. But if not, and you just wanna see some other configuration videos, Remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm aiming for a thousand subs and any help would be really appreciated. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video is in. So go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. Down below, I've got my Discord. So if you want to chat with me, that's the best place to go for that. I will respond to YouTube comments, but it's much easier to get into a conversation on something like Discord. Also down below, I've got my library. So if you want to see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube, that's probably the best place to go for that. At this stage, it's the only place off of YouTube I'm actually using, so until I decide to use something else, then that's probably the best place to go. And also, I've got my support links, so if you'd like to support the channel, then I've got some crypto wallets and a PayPal and a Patreon, so if you want to support the channel, that's the best place to go, but obviously, you don't have to do that if you don't feel like doing it. All the videos will remain available for free, and lastly, I've got my Twitter and my Mastodon, so if you want to get video updates, that's the best place to go for those. So I think that's pretty much everything for me now, so... I'm out.